Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Vulcan 1.1 is out, but don't worry, DX12 is totally the future, bro. And what happens when rocket cars meets golf? Turns out, it's not much. Steam brags about the hardware chops. I mean, dozens of people bought the Vive. Dozens! And uh, throw some Linux on your PS4. No, not yours. Or yours. Maybe yours. Neverwinter Nights is coming out again this month. And Valve t- take on the Hearthstone. Uh, they say it's 2019, but Valve Time says it's more like 2024. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits to t- 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 doing all this nightmare fuel under the Linux. It's a thing joined every week by the man up north, uh, Master Sphinx, where it's nice and cold. Hey, bud. It's, it's very chilly. My nipples are like pencil erasers. Oh, man, that sounds so hot and... Uh, the man on the island, one Pedro Mateus, Hello. joining us. Uh, together with Shot Room Dynamic. Look at them. They're beautiful doing that business because they help us form Cocaine Voltra. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think I'll just get started. I reran the cable from my house all the way out to the little junction box, so I rented a trencher, and it turns out. Once you rent a trencher, everything needs trenching, and I almost installed <laughs> uh, sprinklers, but I talked myself out of it. Kind of proud of myself. <laughs> you, gotta, you, you gotta make sure you trench yourself before you wreck yourself. I'm telling you, man. Trench yourself? <laughs> what's, what's new with you, baby? Oh, oh, not much. It's just been crazy, crazy work stuff. Brain's been made of poop lately, so I'm, I'm, I'm in great shape to do this show today. All right, good times. Uh, Pedro, you got a new toy. I got two new toys. I got a small toy. Yeah, teeny tiny little controller. And a big toy. Let's see if I can bring this up without hitting the microphone. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I I know most of you are listening to this. That is the largest dildo I've ever... (laughs) Yeah, like, which which one better scrapes your prostate? Right. It's so pretty and so shiny. I, I love it. I like how it, it's a Chromebook and it's got a Chrome logo so people know not to bother stealing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's just a $200 laptop. Ones. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, something we like to steal away each and every week is the horse. That made no sense, but damn, I, I tried, man. Well, I, I, I mean, the, the, the horse is a cheap bitch. It's, uh, it's giving away the beatings for free. It's the steam! Linux update of the week. The week. <laughs> oh well, you oh, know, boy. every so often there's a there's a Steam beta update that happens, and Not you download one. it, and sometimes it breaks your install, mm-hmm. and sometimes mm-hmm. it uh, gives you some additional support for uh, some Valve hardware. Uh, they have. So from the uh, March 7th update, it looks like they have added five pro support, which means that this should theoretically work out of the box with the Steam client under Linux, Mm -hmm. which is all well and good, uh, I I guess. All we need now is some VR games on Linux that aren't from Crow Team. Oh, shots fired. Truthful, truthful shots fired. I don't know, man. It's... We, we've talked about this on the show several times, 100%. And I definitely do feel that we're, we're not going to see massive adoption of a $1,200 piece of kit when a lot of people are still recovering and paying off their credit cards from that $800 mm-hmm. original vibe. But plus, 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 plus the cost of the GPU. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Ooh. You got to think about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, that VR gaming PC costs, I don't know, $2,000 ish. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's something at least it's, it's good to have support, even if the adoption isn't really there. Uh, the other thing was, uh, fix the crash with OpenGL drivers on recent Red V drivers. That, that is good. That is very good. Hmm. All right. Coming up next, man, it looks like, uh, we might be getting some new video games from Valve. That doesn't even may- sound may- right. Maybe. Maybe, mm-hmm. Listen, maybe, maybe my complaints about VR games under Linux will finally be addressed. <laughs> so a couple months ago, back in January, um, Gaben did a little AMA on the Reddits. Uh, we covered the whole, oh, three new VR games are coming out uh, from Valve. 
in their first game mm-hmm. release since uh, the Dota 2 way back when. And that threw everyone in a tit. They're like, oh my god, it's um, it's, uh, it's Half-Life 3 confirmed. Not really, though, because the guy came out and leaked the story for it. Uh, mm-hmm. So they had, they had a bit of a roundtable uh, in uh, Bellevue uh, because there's a... Um, well, we'll talk about it a little later, but uh, there's a new card game coming out from Valve. Oh, yes. And uh, they were answering some questions. And as it turns out, uh, these are going to be like, there's three VR games down the pipe. One full-fledged single-player game alongside Artifact. And um, Gabe N was taking the opportunity to talk up a bit of their uh, their hardware chops. Uh, about, oh, oh yeah, well, now we have electrical engineers and so on and so forth. Well, no, I mean, Listen. he even brought up, like, um, it's like if we need someone to design a chip, we can do... Uh, really? Mm-hmm. Wait, hang on. Nope, 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 nope. Jordan. Oh. It's a head scratcher. <laughs> okay, all right. So I, <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, what, what, what I didn't catch out of the corner of my eye, it genuinely looked like a giant straight-up whisk, and I was like, really? Did, did, yep. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, you're hundred percent right. I'm able to build new hardware, but the one thing we were able to take away from this is that Gaben can say the number three out loud without things. I'm sure he could say the number three and not entirely sure he knows where it comes on the scale of, you know, progression. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, he did say that, uh, their hardware experience taught him a lot and, um, you know, regardless of how it did, it was an investment for the future. I mean, yeah, okay. The Steam controller, very nice controller. It is. Uh, but uh, I really do hope that that investment for the future means that we'll see a proper Steam machine instead of 20 models that dual boot Windows. That'd be nice. I I think the like if we want to really spool up the Booga Booga speculation drive, mm-hmm. I think... If we're gonna see something console esque coming out of Valve, it'd probably be some sort of like out of the box VR experience, like appliance thing, where you set up in the corner, you set up the towers, and it has like a sufficiently beefy GPU and some like Valve design co processor to optimize VR operations. That would be the Booga Booga mm-hmm. pipe dream thing. That, that would be interesting to actually see, but I, yeah, unless they're making all the hardware because none of the vendors that made Steam machines are. <laughs> they don't want to deal with them anymore. No, they don't blame learn them. that lesson. No, I completely, <laughs> unfortunately, would be on their side for that. Uh, three VR games, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> we'll see. So, Crest. Crest is on. Chrome yes. Toothpaste. Yes. So, uh, Crest is a indirect god simulator, quote unquote, from the makers of Crest. <laughs> and um, it came out early access. Uh, they just hit 1.0. Um, mm-hmm. They have a bunch of updates that are probably relevant to people who have actually been playing this game because none of this stuff means anything to me. Uh, but <laughs> it's a god simulator. I, I think it's more like a black and white, but like you don't get to yeah. be a monkey. I don't know, man. Browns. That's kind of my kind of god right there. Just a big stick with a mace <laughs> yeah. on the end of it. It's like, yeah, I can manage oh, this. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, this this is noteworthy because it's another one of these rarities uh, game coming out of early access and going on sale normally. Um, but there, there was one little line in this, uh, little release note. It's like, it's never truly going to be finished. So that doesn't really fill me with confidence at all. I mean, it means, I think that, uh, they're going to keep on working, uh, on the game and making it better as time goes along, maybe introducing new features, releasing new content, I'm totally down for that. But much like Jordan, I've grown a little bit too jaded to believe game developers in 2018 when they say, oh yeah, the game's never going to be finished, so it's uh, it's just going to be jank all the way through. Yeah, they, they've sent us a couple of copies. We'll be definitely taking a look at it. In fact, you know what? I we, even we have got, a, we got an extra one. Got we? an extra one. It's currently oh, yes. $9.99, so it's not outrageously priced at all. I mean, that's mm. damn near impulse buy territory. So I want to say this, uh, if you want to win a copy, when this show gets published on Twitter or G+, share it with hashtag LGC Care so I can search for it, and we will pick that business out at random. That seems fair, right? Yeah? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, tell us what kind of god, what type of cruel, malicious deity you would be, but that works too. Yeah, that's okay. Bonus points if you do that. Yeah, you might. I mean, <laughs> add a little description in your retweet or your um, G plus share or anything like mm-hmm. that. That'll, that'll you know, yeah. I looked at it and uh, may, maybe I, I kind of agree with what I've seen in chat room. It's like, but it's not black and white, which always. That looked like a fun game. I mean, it's not black and white. It's not populous. It's, it's they're trying. Not go to so I guess we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Okay, Pedro, you had a raging clue. Like Pe- Pedro oh, yes. was so excited about this, he actually logged into the show notes before Saturday. I mean, <laughs> I do that sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, every Friday. Beam Dog does a little stream on Twitch to talk about. Uh, what they're doing with their enhanced editions like the Baldur's Gates and the Icewind Dales and the Planescapes. And now that they have uh, Neverwinter Nights enhanced edition on the pipeline, well, um, it's it's coming out. It's coming out proper on March 27th. So I do hope you got one of them quote-unquote beta keys. Uh, because as it turns out, they went a little trigger happy and instead of giving people beta keys, they gave them... Um, full keys that get you all the premium modules and everything else as well and judging by the um the level of graphical improvement i've seen in some of the uh, future bills that they were showing on the uh, live stream on friday yeah that's that's looking pretty good mm. that's actually looking pretty good good on you babe dog good on you all, 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 all i care is that if uh, dance with rogue still works if I can import that yes, mod. It's one hundred percent backwards compatible. That's part of the reason why they can't just go in and change stuff willy dilly. It's they want to retain that backwards compatibility. And they this also is an support... inside joke for people who've actually played Neverwinter Nights and know that it's the porno <laughs> module. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Man. I... Uh, the uh Steamworks multiplayer works. If you have a friend on Steam who's playing the game, you could just right click on their name and join the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Steam Workshop, where you can get all the mods without having to go hunting on the World Wide Web for them. So that's pretty good. Well, as someone who gives an absolute gang of negative fucks <laughs> for Neverwinter Nights, even though I'm sure I bought a copy back in the late 90s or early aughts, I'm glad it's coming out. There, there was a very real thing when Pedro was attempting to communicate with everyone in our discord that you could get the free beta keys. And like 20 minutes later, we were able to pry the information out of them. How about going to do that? Look, and, they uh, had instructions on their server. I assumed you lot could read. No one <laughs> reads anything, Pedro. You of all people should know that. Right. You illiterate tit. I don't Coming know. up next. I'll try it. When it when it comes out, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Maybe the enhanced edition <laughs> will be better. So, yeah. Oh. So, so spe- speaking of uh, games based off tabletop RPGs, Animu Gates of Memories. Hey man, it is Onomatopoeia Grapes of Huge Memories. The sequel, possibly. We kind of like this game. It uh, mm-hmm. was a little bit of a brawler, infinitely better than it had any business being, but it needed some more mm-hmm. time in the oven. But the developers, uh, Anima, <laughs> I want to call it Onomatopoeia so bad. Anna or Anima too. That's another problem. They're saying, hey man, yeah. we're thinking about making a part two of this, you know, set in the same universe, maybe some different characters. And again, the first one was, you know, kind of hella rough. Had a lot of promise. Maybe they're going to do a Cam Pagan for this. And I was just following through this thread and they're, they're still, uh, as of March 4th, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be on GOG and all that. So, you know, if they turned the volume up on this, because it, this was really close to just i mean it was a gorgeous game it's a very good looking and very good performing yes. uh, unity game at that and tight controls too which is uh, also something you don't see every day in unity so good on them for that it was it, it, uh, one of my favorite it, games in uh, 2016 so yeah i might actually have it, to finish, it doesn't uh, it doesn't look like uh, it's going to be, they're going to Hollow Knight this, though. It's pro- They said that in the thread that it's probably going to be a standalone, so mm-hmm. unlikely mm-hmm. you're going to get this good stuff if you already own the game you're going well, to Man, come on. Yeah, cash, which well, is fair. Let's be but, honest. Yeah. Nobody's going to be Hollow Knighting us. anything like Team Cherry has done. It was like, here, let's just continue. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> 
All right. All so right. Uh, I guess we get into, yes, the actual cards. And uh, Gaben dealt uh, a little bit in that interview what he did. And he was saying that the card game Artifact that they're going to be releasing is uh, they're going to try uh, as hard as they can to step away from the uh, pay-to-win model that every single card game nowadays has. Uh, as someone who plays a lot of Hearthstone, uh, it is um, it is a problem. Even uh, in the earlier days, Hearthstone was very much a kind of pay-to-win, and it's only gotten worse. But uh, this one, uh, besides sharing a lot of the same mechanics from what I read, uh, it, the big difference is that it has a focus on lanes, where instead of having one game, you have three games happening at a time, and you have to basically try and win all of them, or at least win more than your opponent, as the case may be. It's, uh, I'll, I'll give it a bash if it comes out on Linux, and uh, Valve will have some explaining to do if it doesn't. What, does that dude have a gun for his junk? I mean... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I it's mean, playing... Let, uh, let, 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 me, let me introduce you to the... Characters. <laughs> Yeah. Also, also, let me introduce you to the final boss of Final Fantasy X-2, which is a massive gun penis. Anyways, uh, what, in, what interested me is that as a, as a game design nerd, it stood out that they actually got Richard Garfield, who is the um, who is the original author of Magic the Gathering, to MTG. come in and do design for this game. So that that, that seems to be pretty interesting. He's a pretty big uh, he's a pretty big gun in game design, especially for trading card games. And apparently, he wants to fix the issues with Magic the Gathering. Oh boy, you're not going to do that. That game is fundamentally broken um, in, in, in this game. So it's going to be interesting to see like what his take on it is. Because, I mean, he did design like arguably one of the most successful games, period, in the last like 30 years. Quite possibly. Um, did, did, is this going to be free or... Uh, supposedly, we, we it will be out on Android in 2019, uh, so we'll have until then to see whether or not it actually is free or if you have to pay for it. Because I'm kind of curious when I ask that, because they will be competing against free. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Free, but pay to win, so... Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, One Fist Man. No punch! Super kinky, yeah. way of the passive fist, not the active fist. You don't have to worry about any no. of that business. No, you you don't need an external power supply. It'll just uh, do it with the power on the line. Now this is a this is a brawler uh, with a little bit of an interesting twist. You're not supposed to actually hit anyone until the last minute. Your job is to dodge all the attacks and then do the oh my gosh and uh, then instantly kill people after you've built up your uh, combo meter. So. It's 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 an interesting little uh, twist on the classic beat 'em up formula. People have been uh, raving about this game. It's a little pricey though. It's uh, seventeen fifty Canadian uh, for mm -hmm. what appears to be some uh, something a little more higher order than a double dragon type game. I don't know, man. Looking at some of this business, it, it has a gauntlet aesthetic to it. I, I want to say, and um, we're talking like yeah. uh, more more, more right, kind of. Hey, Gauntlet's Steampunk not the word. Golden Axe? Golden Axe is what I was yeah. looking for. Yeah. 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 Steam, steampunky Golden Axe. I don't know, man. 1499, what sneaky American cash is. But, but, yeah. it's. I so like the good. idea. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, a different take on the whole brawler thing. When you think brawlers, you think like Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, something like that. But this one, yeah, the focus is on blocking and dodge rolling your way to victory. I'm done for that, I think. Mm. We'll have to play it and give it a go, but... Mm. Yeah, no. Maybe we'll give it a try. It could definitely be a thing. Uh, Jordan, what are your favorite games to play in the after show is uh, Golf With Enemies. So I, I do just want to kill myself every time I see that game or hear someone talk about it. Yeah, uh, Somebody took this and was like, hey man, let's see how close we can get to Rocket Cars without getting sued. And uh, they mm -hmm. called their title Super Inefficient Golf. <laughs> Golf builds on top of the most inefficient game ever conceived by making it even less efficient. Drop your silly golf stick and start using exploding mines to catch boom birdie. Um, all right. They don't know what a golf club is. I possibly, <laughs> I don't know, man. It, I, it marble madness jetpacks with a golfing mechanic. 
possible. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't know. It's it, going to be available. It is missing one key feature, though. March 15th. Nah, man. This is perfectly baked. You, you get online, you play it with your friends, and you have a good time. Except you don't. <laughs> you don't play with friends at all. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, no, don't, no. Just, just don't be silly. You wouldn't possibly <laughs> release something like this single player only in 2018. That, that, that'd be ridiculous, oh, yes. man. No. Well, they haven't released it yet. It's only coming out on March 15th. But yeah, that that's literally what they're going to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that yeah. that's going yeah. to tank. <laughs> Oh yeah, at least I the the one thing one neutral thing I can say about golf with friends is they realized that for the obscene bullshit that mini golf is, you need people around, otherwise it's just boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you seriously, how do you have an idea? It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to release a uh, wonky physics mini golf type game in twenty eighteen and it's going to be single player. I don't stop, stop golfing yourself. L listen, maybe the the, <laughs> Pretty much. the target audience is people who are going to I don't know, like Mars. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe. Well, listen, listen. We can we can at least say that more effort was put into that game than the next two mm -hmm. games. Oh of, yes, maybe. Uh, yeah, no, it, this is one game where they just replace the uh, enemy models with a different. Uh, Acid pack. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm showing you one. Dragon Hunt right now, but watch this. Boop. Chupacabra. <laughs> Chupacabra, <Same> yes. <laughs> the Mexican <laughs> goat sucker? <laughs> yes. So you have... Pedro, what there's about finally dragons? a game where what I can about? shoot at you? Sure, let's go with that. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it is literally the exact same game with different enemy models. That's what it is. Uh, and this isn't exactly... Uh, these aren't the first uh, games of these that have come out on Steam. But as far best as I can tell, uh, they are the first to come out on Linux. So... I don't know. Did the Acid Pack get uh, Linux compatibility all of a sudden? That's all I could think. Or, I mean, you, these games have been... Well, they're saying the release date's March 12th, 2018, man. So Yes. Uh, well, it, I, I, I I do love this Pedro S grammar in the description, though. It's a first person horror shooter that confronts players with legendary creature living in the jungle. Oh, well, that, uh, <laughs> mine's the uh, first person horror shooter that allows players to hunt one of the most mysterious creatures ever roaming the earth. Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's a chaotic first person shoot that confronts heavily armed players with the horrifying creatures. Dragons. <laughs> Man. There be dragons, I'm bitches. Sold. I'll take 12. <laughs> oh. We just had to throw this Multiple in Multiple bosses to defeat with huge arsenal. Not yes. only is it effectively the same screenshots from the same asset pack, these were posted <laughs> the same day within seconds of each other in the Steam store with effectively the same uh, cover art screenshot for both of them because I thought it was a double post on accident. Nay. Nay. <laughs> Let's listen. Nope. If, if you pay two hundred dollars, you can double your chances of getting discovered on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, good thing we got rid of green light. Oh yeah, that's working out great, isn't it, Valve? Mm. Uh, are you lining your pockets with that one hundred dollar fee? <laughs> Don't let pesky voting oh, get in I, the way I, of the I, money. Mister Mister Red, I do like that. The, the, these are basically the Mad Libs of Steam. <laughs> Oh man! No. All right, I, 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 I think that's gonna put a bow on this nonsense. Coming up mm -hmm. next, oh my God! DirectX is the future, you guys. Listen, this new version of Vulcan, you, it's just it's worse, objectively worse than anything you've ever seen. It's Goliath stupid. It's so stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's Jordan's face. Hello, how you doing? Uh, well, we still don't have driver news, much to the chagrin of NVIDIA users on Linux everywhere, ourselves included. But before we get to the proper news, we gotta get down with the cashews, and that's uh, 
Where you lot throw peanuts at our heads. You know, 290 uh, and episodes, Pedro, it. and I think that is genuinely the most retarded thing you've said yet. <laughs> I know. L- l- listen, listen, enough about nuts in your face. Seriously. I've had it up to here with you just talking about I how mean, you want to eat nuts. We're about to hold our hat out and beg people crunch, for money, crunch. and you're going to feed them some <laughs> bullshit like that, man? I mean, come on. Yeah. Cashews. I have to set the bar low. Yeah. Really <laughs> low. <laughs> Listen, there, there, is, there is no bar. The bar has descended to the center of the earth and has disintegrated. You can help us buy a new bar by heading on over to LinuxGameCast.com, <laughs> clicking the support the show button, clicking one of these various links and entering your credit card number. It's good stuff. We got affiliate links. We got uh, donate buttons for PayPal, Bitcoin. Uh, we got a wish. We got an Amazon wish list. If you uh, buy us stuff, you'll get to go up on the. I, I, I don't know. This is. We're, we're, we're moving on to Fuckwall 3.0 now, yeah? Oh, we're getting fucking yeah. close. Hang on, let's make it all um, fancy. There we go. Dance, Frank, dance. Ooh, <laughs> unz, unz, unz. Ooh. Oh, it, it's oh. it's so good. But but you, you can also head on over to uh, Linux or patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> the best and easiest way to support this nightmare fuel. It helps fund a bunch of stuff that we do, uh, including, including Tuesday and Thursday streams, an extra show on Wednesday with Ven and Pedro, and possibly soon Jill, that one person who's filming stuff and posting scale videos in Discord. And you get all sorts of cool stuff, like access to said Discord channel. You get early show note access. You get the ability to submit stories to the show notes so you can determine what we talk about. You get some uncut VOD access. You get RSVP for game streams. If like we're going to do something that's more than one or two players on Tuesday and Thursday, if you're a Patreon, mm-hmm. you get uh, you get first crack at that. And even if you're so if you're so desperate for validation and attention, you can give us money to get a seat on the show. We have a brand new Ryzen powered computer specifically for this. Uh, and we got to thank uh, we got to thank one of the Patreons this week, uh, Mini Jack, for doing <laughs> something. I don't I don't know what it is. It's a new but Patreon. Mini Jack, you listen, did it. You're listen, awesome. Listen, Mini Jack showed up and he's like. Hey, I want I want to help you guys out, and I was like, "All right, that's cool." And he tried to give us some cashews, and I was like, "Fuck that noise! We we need, <laughs> we, we need to make it rain," which he did. You know what? Ooh, penguin. Penguin rain is going to cover up Pedro just because I'm still pissed <laughs> off about the cashew thing, man. That's, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I I'm dropping that on you on Wednesday. There, there's going to be a point sometime on Wednesday. I'm just going to bring up cashews. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know. It was the first thing that sort of rhymed that popped into my head. <laughs> <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Enough of this garbage. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mini Jack. And thank, thanks to everyone who's supporting this dog and pony show. <laughs> I don't know. We, we yeah, keep going. An, an emphasis on dog. <laughs> All right. So the, there's a new Whoa. version of Vulcan out, right? Mm hmm. It's Scott, Scott, the, the man with the sexy sister himself uh, wrote a story about it for Live long for, and all this is in our show notes. One, don't call it spear of the moment. All right, Scott, you're dead to me just for that. That's worse than cashews. Um, <laughs> we got some new things with the 1.1 release with Vulcan, mainly for me. Well, not for me, but I think for the ecosystem, explicit multi GPU support, bitches. Mm-hmm. Now, this is not cray cray as you might think, but I mean, if you have different GPU, because you're not using SLI or Crossfire with this, you just got the same cards in the same system, and they basically have to be within the same generation of each other. It's not like you're going to be using your integrated Intel with, you know, your Vegas or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, at this point, Kronos no longer just playing catch up here, man. I mean, Vulcan's now like straight up in a position to like, help lead gpu design and capabilities not direct x anymore 1.1 also enables the use of microshafts hlsl shader programs what's that that sounds like moon talk eh, maybe maybe just a little bit but what it will help is moving existing direct 3d code to vulcan so it's even one less excuse and lads you might remember yeah, last you- week we brought up that you know valve made it rain and they're like open source the uh convertotron 9000 well, okay. yeah so mm-hmm. this well and and you and, be, and because uh, vulcan can adjust hlsl shaders and not just spur v shaders anymore um yeah. and combine that with uh, like you said the molten dk stuff 
Vulkan is now the thing you should be using to develop your 3D apps. There's not really much of an excuse because it literally buys you support on every single platform. Mm-hmm. There's no yep. reason why you wouldn't bite this bullet. Um, the other the other nifty thing that's being included in this uh, is probably something that uh, Valve and IckyButts are very happy about is multi-view support where you can uh, render the same image from different angles and display them on different displays, which is useful because when you're rendering VR, you actually have to change the angle slightly of uh, the left or right eye because you don't see things flatly. Your eyes are kind of at an mm. angle. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Iculus, um had a talk. No? I didn't have time to throw in the notes. Uh, somebody dug up that either today or yesterday, Valve just filed a patent for eye tracking. Ooh, so interesting. They're up to something on that. Just I yeah. wanted through that, but out. yeah, but either either way, uh, Nvidia has a beta driver out for that already. So if you want, if you're a developer and want to start screwing around with Vulkan one dot one, you absolutely can. Uh, AMD and Intel will have theirs coming out spoon trademarked. Um, yeah, yeah, no, the uh, API to rule them all finally has some legs to stand on, and it's great to see. Uh, the I was kind of disappointed to see the uh, the Vice Group functionality is. <laughs> For homogenous uh, multi GPU systems, think SLI, think uh, Crossfire. You need to have similar or the same GPU in order to be able to uh, get the multi rendering with the Vulcans, which is kind of sad to see because Vulcan, with everything else it can do, it's yes, just Pedro, it could probably I was do looking forward to pairing my Voodoo One with my 980. Uh, probably not the Voodoo one because that doesn't support Vulcan, but say pairing a GTX 770 with your 980 to get better performance. Would you be against that? Yes. Well, <laughs> well, well I, I, I remember too that a lot, a lot of people were having hopes for Vulcan with the not having to explicitly define SLI and crossfire profiles mm-hmm. because the language yeah. just supports scaling across multiple GPUs. That's that's kind of the big buy here. Is, but I, know, I think we to, should put out. I mean, this, this like. St- Rickly puts the ability for multi GPU support onto the developers, which basically means kids at the end of the day, we're not ever going to fucking see it. So, yeah, no, SLI yeah. and Crossfire are now dead. <laughs> well, I mean, like just, just the whole idea of using more than one GPU, now that's all on the developer to do. So, you just, no, mm-hmm. just, just not, not going to happen. Don't get your hopes up. But you will be able to full screen that shit. Oh, yeah. And speaking of developers, Mr. Alert, uh, he started a little bit of a project a while back, uh, which uh, he called SDLCL, uh, which uh, is basically the midway point between SDL 1.2 and SDL 2.0. And what it does is it lets you run SDL 1.2 games with SDL 2.0 libraries and all the functionality that the new libraries bring you, in theory. Well, now it's not a theory anymore because it's feature complete. It's done. Well, it's it's API <laughs> it's API complete, and it's not necessarily done. But all of the uh, all of the cust- all of the um, SDL one point two calls can successfully mm-hmm. be translated to SDL two uh, There are some custom extensions that need some work because you could add custom uh, extensions to SDL one point two, so those would not be directly translated. But at the very least, some of the older SDL 1.2 games will now be playable, and this this is a nice out of the box solution. Uh, and it def- it needs some testing. Uh, definitely pull pull this. I'm, mm-hmm. I know Strider is like super excited about this because it solves a lot of problems that Lutris was having. Um, <laughs> and I don't I don't know. It'd be kind of neat to get the Ryan C. Gordon stamp of approval on it because he's heard, yeah. he knows about this and he thought it was a good idea. It's just he never had time to do it. So. And uh, to be fair, I did try and pull it. I built it, and uh, OG, like the OG version of uh, Neverwinter Nights for Linux, now has sound. It's still uh, crashy. Uh, I don't know what's causing it. Uh, even running it through GDB just shows the core dump and nothing else. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. It is actually a very very good thing to see, especially if you want to play older games. With a modern-ish support. Well, I think most importantly, it's not—it's not even nice to see it. It's—it's it's a necessity because mm-hmm. we lo- we love ourselves some Linux. We're zealots, but that's one thing you gotta give Microsoft. 
Reddit for is backwards compatibility. Because Linux is desperately lacking in that. Because we're talking games from less than a decade ago. You're just mm-hmm. fuck out of luck. And a lot of them and tools like this will allow us to relive those horrible, horrible times. So I want to thank Mr. Red for that. Um, PS4 is back in the news. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, well, we uh, we knew that Phil Overflow has had uh, their exploit to um, get Linux running on the PlayStation 4. And with certain models of the OG fat PS4, you can now do this with this lovely little thing from Valen Brights or Valentine Brights. I don't know how to pronounce this. Link to this is in our show notes. There's quite a few. Th- there's quite a few steps you need to do beforehand. You need to actually uh, compile the proper payload from uh, Fail Overflow. You need to get. You also need to uh, create a new, or you need a new K exec as well, um, to allow uh, the BSD like pre-launch kernel to, you know, load this into uh, system memory. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's not. It's it only supports a couple of the older first gen PlayStation fours. They have a list of supported models. Uh, and you need a FAT32 formatted USB drive with this on it. But for some people, this should be enough to get uh, Linux running on the PlayStation 4 so they can start fucking around and get, trying to get stuff working on there, which is pretty neat. Could be fun. Yep. Uh, pract- yeah, I, I think you hit the right word there, man, is neat. Practical, useful at this point. This, this is, um, hey, I, I, I got Linux running on. This, my toaster, and my Hitachi Magic <laughs> one. Peace out. It's, uh, uh, Jordan brought up an interesting argument a while back when we first started talking about this, which was PS4s are pretty cheap, especially if you can find, like, a secondhand older one, like the original model, um, and you load up Linux on it. It's, it's a very cheap HTPC. A very cheap, uh, very budgety, very low end Steam machine, but it works. Well, you also got to look at uh, cheap and that what you just said is correct, but it's also the form factor. We were talking during the pre pre super shows and what it's going to run to um, you to shove all that hardware into the Xbox yes. case, right? It's about three hundred twenty pounds ish because mm-hmm. RAM prices. <laughs> So that's the thing. Uh, I I don't know, man. I'm not going to be doing it, but I know there's some people out there who are very excited about it. So up next, uh, I, I think really our 2018 favorite psychopaths. <laughs> oh, yes. RPCS3. They're here and uh, they're not going anywhere. They keep on improving, although they decided to change some things in the... Um in the backbone of uh, RPCS3, and with the February 2018 progress report, they actually say that there is a minus 0.12% uh, of games that are playable. And that is due to those changes that they made. They say uh, they will be uh, expanding on that with the March um, report. But there's also a noticeable difference in the uh, nothing. Those games that you basically start and they don't do anything you don't get any screens they just don't work now there's only uh 34 of those that's really good that is actually really amazing 34 games that do nothing uh 1070 games that uh are well you can get in game and uh 710 which are actually playable which for a project this recent is kind of amazing Hmm. Uh, absolutely um and uh, every every time i just look for like the ge- the uh, games that they're supporting now and i got really excited because uh, Milger solid five ground zeros is uh making progress i just want a playable version of this game guys give me give me give me give me yeah. they also introduced a gross looking tan theme if you want uh oh, yeah. something a little more modern in the ui design but uh tech and tag has some updates rock band has some updates silent hill Nino Kuni, mm-hmm. Cars 3, Godzilla. Actually, that was a fun Godzilla game. It was essentially just a fighting <laughs> game. It was a fighting game with Godzilla monsters, which is just a blast. You can blow up environments and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is uh, more progress. And like Pedro said, it's astounding that like at a little over a year old, they're at a point where 
they have a lot of uh, PlayStation 3 games outright playable. And this is great news for game preservation people like us. And also people who don't want to pay money for a PlayStation 3. Well, yeah, you don't have to deal with a whole... It's a good way to keep the hardware alive and well. And, uh, man, by the time I get around to buying some PS3 games, and I emphasize buying PS3 games, that's a really good um, anti-piracy thing is to put your games on Blu-ray and use most of the disc capacity. Mm -hmm. Oh. This, this thing's going to be complete, and I I just like watching it because it's moving at such a breakneck pace. So, the Seaver shooter now Kickstarter with demo. You guys got to learn how to English Linux Game Consortium. <laughs> That's a little painful, man. Uh, Deceiver is a pre-apocalyptic <laughs> dot pick pick underscore philosophical uh, shooter on Linux. It's a thing. You can play it. You can check it out. We've talked about it on the show before. But they have launched a demo for Linux, Mac, and that other thing. And I was going to play it. What is it? You know, it's like Assault, Capture the Flag, Deathmatch, all that fun stuff. And it's got its own funky, like, just low poly. I don't even know. What would you call it, Pedro? Art style? Wireframe? Wireframe, possibly. It's a bit more. I mean, it, it's definitely an aesthetic choice. Tron. It's like reboot on acid. Tron. I <laughs> think maybe we can go to Tron. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. But they do have a demo. That's the only way we'll ever mention a Kickstarter. So I downloaded it from itch.io. And I was like, okay, let's check this thing out. Decompressed it. Didn't have to CH mod the binaries. Doing a good job. Started the game with the launcher. It launched and immediately said, you need to log in with your itch account. To which I retorted, uh, you can fuck right off. So I, I didn't get a chance to play it. <laughs> you know, when you put that in the notes, I thought, oh, you need to actually log in to itch to download the demo, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, it's actually a bit more interesting than that. <laughs> Why in the holy hell? Care, care, care to explain? It's boggling. No, Ven was saying it's when you get in game that it asks you to log into itch. Right. Ugh. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not good. No. Why, 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 why you do that, developers? That that's just, that makes no sense. I, I didn't that's have bad. words for it at the time. Bad. I just think bad. Not, Steam is like locked in. Itch. That, that would be like downloading a game from GOG and it's pulling that shit. Don't do that. That's or bad. or like, please log in with your Desura account. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, if someone was holding a loaded gun to the head, could, could you remember the credentials? I the think I still remember my password. Uh, I'd tell him to pull the trigger. <laughs> maybe. <in. laughs> maybe. It would be 50-50 me walking away from that. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, right. boys and girls, I think it's time to pull the trigger on this new segment. Yeah, it, but, you know, maybe this entire thing never happened. Maybe it was just a figment of your imagination brought on by extreme chair trauma. Up next. You know, you guys, I don't, I don't actually believe any of you exist. I think this is all just a projection that my subconscious is creating because I'm actually in an insulin coma because I ate too many Malamars. Cashews. But since we're here anyways... <laughs> I got I got injected with a syringe full of cashews, and now I'm having a seizure. This is this is Figment. It's from Bedtime Digital Games. It's built on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for around twenty of your local particular currency. What is it? Figment is an action adventure game that invites you to explore a unique, surreal universe filled with music, humor, and a multi layered narrative. Join Dusty and his ever optimistic friend Pipper on an adventure through the different sides of the mind seeking to restore the courage that's been lost uh the devs did send us some keys through the curator connect thanks a lot for that folks um and what is this this is the chair qa edition where we uh we take a game we uh maybe play a, play it for a little bit talk about it do a little quality assurance that the devs should have done before uh before releasing it and who oh boy that that holds true today stay tuned stay tuned for that um and then we give things a score based on chairs one chair means that's garbage two chairs means that's meh three chairs means that's pretty good four chairs means that's awesome and we got our categories oh doom mixed with working shiny sounds controls and fun which we apply these to so let us kick this off uh, you know i'm gonna start off mixed with the working because it's story time with jordan guys get, get, get around children's <laughs> 
So I, I, I go and I install this game. And it's a Unity title, so I figure I click play on, on Steam. And the game pops up, right? Wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two stack traces later, and or two stack traces in about 30 minutes later. Um, yeah, they, number one, they don't ship the game with a Steam app ID, which will suppress errors in stack traces. Number two, once you create that, uh, the game can't deal with in case and sensitive file systems. I have two folders in my home directory called games with an uppercase G, games with a lowercase G. The game itself was installed in lowercase G games. But according to the stack trace, it was trying to find the game data in uppercase G games because who the fuck knows why? Uh, so I had to I had to move the capital G games folder, create a sim link. And the pro- that was the workaround to this. But this is stupid. No one should ever have to do this. This took me 30 minutes and I had to pull out a develop a code analysis tool in order to figure out what the hell was actually happening. In no way should this ever be required to make a fucking game work. But once you correct this, the game does run perfectly fine. So I can't give it one chair, but fuck you, man. Two chairs on Fedora 2664 bit, okay. the i7 6700K, and the GTX 980. <gasps> uh, that's the thing, man. Over here uh, in, in a Kumbuntu land, 1710, running that 414 kernel, because 415 and 390 NVIDIA, long, uh, uh, that's a Wednesday show right there, man. You know, I'm not going to blow it up. I didn't have any big issues. It did create the My Games folder, but, I mean, sort of like Road Redemption and stuff like that. Shouldn't have been fucking called My Games. That was confusing. It was there, there will never be anything else under that bad form. I'll say that. It's not the first Unity title to do it, but um, the Ryzen 7 1700, 16 gigajoules of RAM, 980 powered, UHD displayed, everything ran. Performant, it was, even at UHD 3840 by 2160, maintained a solid, solid 60. You might see it dip like to 58 or something like that, but, you know... It's not terrible. I blame that on VSync. Well, I don't know. You enable, disable, whatever. Didn't have any tearing issues. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a clean bill of health, man. Solid four. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, like everybody else, it, it, it you know, that, that fucking my games folder that it creates in your home directory because fuck you and your non English locale didn't strike a particularly nice chord with me. And it's pretty ironic when you consider that the game does support other languages, specifically Portuguese. Even though, uh, even though it defaulted to Portuguese, uh, when I got to like the press a key to or press start, it was in Italian. What? But uh, yeah, no. So much for coherence. Uh, and if I refuse to keep. Snap packages installed because of that stupid lowercase folder that snaps still create. What makes you think I'm going to keep Figma installed? Now, I will make the argument that if you are running SteamOS and you don't really look at your home folder directory all that much, that's not that big a deal. Uh, and I didn't have the issues with launching the game that Jordan did. So I'm going to give it three chairs on the Ryzen 5 1600 with the um, GTX 1080, which after disabling VSync and setting the uh, uh, FPS cap to 120, no more frame dips. That's how that works. <laughs> All right, well, that's uh, that's three chairs for Mix with the Working. Shiny and Sounds is up next. What did you think, Ven? Hey, man. Let, let's look at it like this. Uh, not a whole lot to report. It Okay. Let's just back that up a second. I'll report this. Because I, I don't like musicals unless I'm performing in them. And there's only one <laughs> I do that for. This has got song and dance numbers, motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And they're not bad, especially the first one you run into it. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't expect this from a little indie game. Fully performed and it's like, all, all right. And got something that doesn't completely suck caught me off guard. Was I wasn't necessarily jamming to it, but I was like, okay, I can dig this. The environments, as you can see if you're watching the video version, hand-drawn, they look nice. They're colorful. They're a little fucking bizarre. I'm digging all this. Um, animation rigging between, like, the your main character versus the little hoverboard, hoverboard, hoverbird that follows you around. Mm-hmm. And, like, the first nightmare baddie that you deal. 
that, uh, those motherfuckers look like they're at what well, he does. Looks like he's a polygon mess from the original Unreal. I mean, the animation rigging is just downright bad. Um, yeah. I do gotta say, you never really feel like you're in the environment. It's kind of like more, more like you're uh, moonwalking on top of it. The best way I can think to explain that to anyone is think of like playing a game where you're constantly just in a Mario overworld map. It kind of has that feel to it. Not then really tied into the world, but for shinies, it looks good. Uh, minus a little bit of jank every now and then. And yeah, the sounds, man, you, you put a fucking musical in there that immediately didn't cause me to put on the Slater. So I'll give you a solid three on that, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even I like the, how uh, all the, or go, go on Pedro. No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, even the, uh, the bad voice acting, uh, seems fitting with the setting. Uh, it's, uh, there's a little intro cutscene that I'm not going to spoil at the start of the game, uh, that tells you, gives you a little background as to what it, what this is, what you're, uh, playing. Uh, but, uh, it's like how you interpret certain accents in people's voices, like the baddies and the uh, people that are behind the closed doors when you knock on the door and they give you a little spiel. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it fits. It's It's got the cartoony, slightly humorous look to it. Uh, and if you walk near one of the uh, <clears throat> instrument plants that uh, there are in the game, and it's just every now and then there's just that one specific one that you walk close to at just the right time and it fits in really well with the music and that triggers that bit of my brain that likes like melodies and stuff it's, that's that's really neat but like ven mentioned the animation is a bit eh, and there's absolutely no feedback to the combat outside of uh some flashing on screen so yeah it gets three chairs because it could have been so much better <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the first thing I heard uh, or I thought of when you, you run into the guy who steals your scrapbook, because this, this is this is a story about a man who needs a scrapbook. Um, I noticed that he's a little wizzo esque in his performance. Everything is miserable. I fed up with this world. You're tearing me apart, Lisa, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, like Ben said, there are musical numbers. Uh, a lot of the uh, like the boss fights or the boss interactions are typically like. Wait, hold a second. Hold on a second. Did he rhyme? Is he <laughs> rhyming to the beat of the background music? Is this a musical number? Okay. Yep. Good. It's it's well done. It's integrated into the game. And it's not like uh da 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 da, -da where the boss and we're gonna uh, it's 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 well done. I like the I like the uh, art style as well. It kind of gives me a bit of a William S. Burroughs type vibe. Something out of like naked lunch or something like that, a little less gritty and a little more pleasant. But I, I dig the surreal aesthetic. Uh, yeah, all, all in all, um, very good, uh, very good art design, very good sound design. Uh, I didn't really notice too much uh, the animation rigging issues. I think it's just a good looking, good sounding game, all things considered. I'll give it three chairs. And that gives it three chairs for the shiny and the sounds. Pedro, talk to us about controls. Uh, you can't rebind the uh, movement keys, but... I think they have successfully uh, found a workaround for that by binding all of the possible movement keys out of the box, or at least was the directional arrows, and if you have an umpad, 8, 4, 2, and 6 also move you around. So, hey, can't really complain about that. Uh, also, uh, one of the new toys, what I got, I mentioned uh, in the main show, was this 8-bit uh, do NES 30 Pro controller. Works out of the box both in uh, the default the input mode that it starts and in X input mode because Steam just sees it as a uh, Xbox 360 controller if you start it in X input mode. So good on them. And apparently Unity now supports D input controllers. So that was nice to learn. Uh, the Steam controller worked out of the box as well. And yeah, not letting people rebind the movement keys would ding it a chair, but as it stands, it seems to cover all its bases, so I can give it a four. All right. Um, I think I'll take the next all crack right. at this, because, yeah, man, this is Lana Spray and Pray button layout <laughs> that, you know, we haven't seen in Unity There's in a while. <laughs> but it happens to just so work default 
on the Steam controller. Unfortunately, that does lead to a lot of the buttons do the same damn thing, so you can kind of uh, make your own decisions on what controls mm -hmm. what, and <laughs> just think back like a year ago. Uh, what do you got? You got move, you got roll, you can boop things with your uh, little sword. Uh, all that seems to work. Nothing really to get excited about. Movement is a bit clunky. And you basically are running around on invisible rails. There's not much in the way of exploration in this game, but I'll yep. talk about that in the fun. The combat, when you run into it, it's a bit shite. There's, there's no real good interaction with the bad guys when you smack them around. It feels like more of an afterthought. No impactful attacks. But... For the controls, it's playable with the Steam controller, Areola controller, and this is definitely something you want to sit back, relax, and hide an adult while playing. Um, I'll throw you a solid three game. Yeah, I got, I got a shiny new silvery DualShock 4. So, because it was on sale, they're down from $300 to $200.95. Um, 20 bucks! But... Uh, no, they're it, 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 it's bad. They're really nice controllers, but holy shit, they are expensive. Um, yeah, so every, everything works out of the box. Like Ben said, uh, you can either pick between the face and the shoulder buttons for how you want to interact with the game. So at least they give you some options. Um, but yeah, the the m moving around, especially in combats, is really really bad. And there are a couple um, there are a couple of uh, traps that enemies can get you caught in, especially if you're near an elevator and you accidentally roll into the elevator, and then they just kill you because you can't escape because they just attack you the second you hit the ground. Um, yeah, the the everything seems to be on like a pseudo grid that doesn't quite isn't quite apparent. You can you can imply it from like the isometric view, but it's just kind of weird. And yeah, the com the combat in this is. We definitely does leave something to be desired but you know everything works out of the box i didn't have to fuck around with any controller settings so i guess i gotta give it three chairs so that's uh nice. three chairs for the uh controls and let's move on to fun then did you have fun seems legit around the 70 minute mark the puzzles get a little too obtuse for old man then something kind of tells me that this game is going to get hella dark later on that's why i was had a little case of the sads because I'm never going to find out because the puzzles also have this added advantage of being hella repetitive. They just wear you down. It's like, this is nothing new. Oh, fetch quest type thing. Not, not saying there's fetch quest, but same repetitiveness of that. And that kind of makes me angry, you know, because I see a game like this. It's, it's got all the right parts. It just needs more time in the oven. And because if, I haven't been said this in a while, but I mean, if this figment was in early access, with like, say in Q4 2019 release, uh, I'd be excited because there's a lot of good shit buried in here and just tons of promise in need of some proper polish. Um, kind of like onomatopoeia grapes of huge manatees, man. This is a hard one to recommend at what, well, what is this one clocking in at? Uh, 20 bucks. Yeah, 20, 20 bucks. 15 pounds. Yeah. It's got this great story that I think is going to take a really like fucked up twist, and I'd like to see it, but I'm never going to get there in the game in its current state. And apparently it's gotten a lot better since it was originally released uh, September 22nd in 2017. So I think this is as good as it's going to get. And uh, yeah, I can't give this a recommend even though it did have a fantastic little musical number in it. So that's that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually hate this game. I, I was kind of salty at it, having going through all this crap to get it actually running. But there's, there's a decent little game in here. It's got a cute surreal art direction and passable attempts at humor and hints at something a little more sinister, like Ben said. But really, the gameplay is where the game falls apart. I didn't really find the puzzles particularly obtuse. It's just a matter of if you can pick it up, you have to because you will always have to backtrack and go find something that you passed by so that you can activate the thing so you can perform the seven or eight repetitive actions and then lo and behold, you can get through the area. Every, everything was sufficiently telegraphed, at least as far as I played. I got past the first box boss and I went to uh, Clocktown 
and at that point i kind of stopped caring uh but it's it's not terrible i i don't, I don't really the, the main thing where this falls apart is i'm stressed out in every single combat just because i'm afraid the controls are going to result in me dying and yeah i i feel yeah yes it's super linear but i feel the game could benefit from a map because after a while everything starts to look the same and i don't remember <laughs> where the hell i've come from or where i've gone especially when there's like two or three branching dead end paths it's just like and especially because there's quite a bit of backtracking in this game it helped to be like oh yeah no i need to go here so blah, blah, blah. It's it's not that big a deal, but I found myself thinking, man, it would be nice if I could actually like have my destination in mind. Like the the, the game is all right. It's just kind of a meh. I, I I think like Ven said, it's if if this was an early access game a couple of years ago, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm I can I can dig it. But as is, especially for twenty bucks, mm -hmm. I can't really I can't really say that it's worth it. I'll give it two chairs because it's there's enjoyable stuff in there, but. There's a lot of other crap you gotta wade through to get to it. It's by no means the worst puzzle game we've played. The puzzles are a little bit obtuse, yes, they're very onerous, if you want to use uh, 10 pound words. Uh, especially when you get into clock ta Clockwork Town and... Okay, it's not like the Talos Principle 9 hours in level obtuse, but it, it gets pretty bad. Uh, Still, I didn't find myself quitting the game out of frustration from knowing exactly what I need to do, but not being able to be asked to do it. Uh, this is the kind of game you would sort of give to a child. Uh, there's the whole, you know, bit that happens at the start. If this thing gets kinda... fucked up in the way I think it gets fucked up at the end, absolutely <laughs> give this to children. It will scar yeah, them. Yeah, there's the, uh, like the thing that happens at the start that sets like the dark tone implications right from the get-go. But as you're playing the game and you're going through everything, everything is so cutesy, everything is so nice, you're probably going to put that to the back of your head and not think about it too much. Um in fact, it's the those very same dark undertones and the topical humor, yes, during that musical number, uh, what Ven mentioned earlier, uh, I did caught the uh, vaccine full of autism bit, and it's those teeny tiny little things in the dialogue and the story that push the story in Figment to the point where I actually started to care a little bit. I, you know, you may remember my spiels about narrative aesthetics and mechanics, but this game seems to be a solid split between the three. They're all good. Like, aesthetics are good, mechanics are good, narrative is good. They're good, but they're not great. And fuck that stupid monkey folder and its stupid monkey folder ass. I will give it three chairs, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, and with that, it gets two chairs for the fun, and we tally all that stuff up, and we get Lestrider, two chairs for Figment. Uh, we got anything we want to say before we cut uh, we cut this off? Hey man, don't uh, call it a comeback, and uh, most certainly don't call the jerk position a review because uh, <laughs> your goal is hopefully to do better than two chairs. Two chairs mean D's get degrees. That, that's what you're dealing mm -hmm. with, and that's what you're dealing with with this. And I'd say definitely a D minus. Like two chairs, my oh shit, we need to start throwing in that. We we can really fuck around with the chairs. I will consult the user <laughs> manual and see if that's possible. <laughs> All right. Uh, chair. Chair minus chair. Let, let, let's uh, All right. uh, get the hell out of here. I, I, I guess the, that's that's it. Coming up next, we only got a, we got an itty bitty bit of hate mail uh, this week. Only only, only one person uh, wrote in. And so we will tear them a new asshole and listen to them whine about it. I say a lot of shit. Like, a lot of shit. Cashews. At, at some point, yes. At some point during the show, I uttered the phrase, let's get down with the cashews. So if you'd like to uh, remind me that uh, that shit don't make no sense, double negative, see, I did it again. Uh, <laughs> go to linkscapecast.com, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Just hit the contact button. Make sure to pick LGC weekly from the uh, little drop downy thing. Or send some relationship advice if you'd like to have Jordan talk shit at your face. Uh, if you're a game developer and you'd like us to look at your game, you can use the Curator Connect or you can do the old-fashioned way. Just make sure to include three keys or a build that we can share amongst 
the three of us, so that we can all play the game and we can all uh, laugh in your face when it turns out it sucks. Please do send some hate mail because we've been running dry. I mean, even Frezzo, he, he threw in this week and is like, hello, I'm lagging a bit behind, so I don't know if you've talked about wine staging's maintainer stepping down, but it seems like the new maintainers have finally uh, managed to bring wine staging to recent wine with a wine staging 3.3 release this weekend. I didn't see any news coverage on this yet, uh, though, so not sure if it is in your radar or not, smiley face. That is not hate. That is very informative. What are you doing, Frezzo? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Tell us, Pedro. <laughs> Put words in his mouth. <laughs> well, uh, he does. Uh, there, there is a bit of a link with wine staging, and yeah. uh, you may know, yes, uh, that uh, Strider uh, has been uh, going crazy all over uh, Discord and G+. Plus about the new wine staging, and it's good to see someone else is picking it up, because the original uh, two developers... All right, have, so, so we can well, talk about this. What, what, what the actual fucking all happened, because I don't follow wine <laughs> development, because I don't use that shit. Um, mm -hmm. What went down, man? I mean, wine staging was the, like, what? Oh, in development version? It, 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 no, it had it had like all the experimental features that weren't being merged in like yes. for the longest time. CSMT was in one staging, mm -hmm. uh, like early DirectX 11 support for like people who wanted to play crappy Overwatch uh, mm -hmm. was in staging, and it, it was being maintained by this one guy, and he stepped down. So they have um, another another person, Michael, I believe it is, uh, stepped Michael up. And uh, Sebastian. They brought it to it. So they brought it to the most recent version of Wine because it lagged behind because it's a series of patches, right? So mm -hmm. uh, they, they've they've brought it to a more recent version of Wine. So if you want funky new features that have not been merged into the main Wine trunk yet, uh, rest assured that that project will be maintained. So if I was looking wine. to do the Wine Vulcan bullshit, that's where I would head yeah. to, right? Uh, if you want to play well, around like, with the no, XVK, well, you do need the new wine staging because, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's where the patches are. Though, 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 though the actual Vulcan support is in wine proper. That, well, the beginnings of, yes. <laughs> I'm getting, mi I'm, to, getting uh, signals, I'm getting mixed signals, man. I'm getting mixed signals. I don't know. Uh, the uh, wine it, it, release it, 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 that it, it, we it talked a, about. It is a mess of very, very poor software development. You have multiple concurrent repositories of what is effectively the same software in different state. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, wine staging 3.3, as Strider points out in uh, Discord, still doesn't have uh, full uh, DXVK compatibility. That's the uh, DirectX 2 Vulkan translation layer, which is what uh, the regular version of wine is also introducing in very, very early prototype type stage thing, whatever. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's good to see that someone else is picking up the patches that don't really make the cut and don't really get added into the um, standard. Apparently, DXVK is a whole different thing. Good to know. Man, every I'm time so I see DXVK, <laughs> my brain does DVDA, man. Just every. <laughs> listen, listen we, we, we need to find out what would Brian Boitano do uh, if he was in charge of the wine project and needed to maintain disparate versions. He would apologize. Mm -hmm. For this bombshell and cue the music, you can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time at uh, GMT minus five, which is about to change. So all that's going to poo. So just check us out on our schedule, linuxgamecast.com forward slash schedule. I'm Ben Stone on Twitter, which remember, if you watched all this way, retweet the show with hashtag LGC cares and some other bullshit for your chance to win a copy of that game we talked about. That earlier. one game. Yes. Crest. Yes. Crest. Colgate. Yes. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> remember push. what it is. Uh, it's been kind of brilliant. Um, cashews, peanuts, almonds, pecans, pistachios. I'm all sorts of nuts, and you can find me at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Swung at Google Plus, because I am that one guy with the plus in front of his name. Well, technically, we all are. I mean, if you just Google.com forward slash plus our names, you'll find us. It's kind of insane, actually. <laughs> I am Pedro Matos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter or plus Pedro Matos on Google+. Plus. 
Um, outside of cashews, did, did we learn anything? No. <laughs> that uh, google.com slash plus our names doesn't actually go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Way to lie to the people, Pedro. What the hell? People come to us for news and information, and you give them shit. No one shit. said it was accurate news and information. <laughs> shit! <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. No, no, no. The actual plus side. No, Pedro. Google.com. Let's either. see if this works. Doesn't work yeah. either. I just tried it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mir, I'm going to die about you bitching about giggling that I can't hear, nor can anyone else on Discord. That is well, not there. Until they all hop into the after shows in room, and then put on the room mic, and then we get murdered by sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, That's no, coming. no. Plus, let's see if this works. Also, doesn't exist. <laughs> hey, Mini Jack, latest patron. All right, there's Frank's Fuckos, Michael, Jill, Steve, Maddie, Linux, Nuru, Stubo, Bradley, Ebro, 20, John M, Mr. Ren, Fox, more Stubo. Yeah, well, I mean, yes. the X2. Yeah. John, Trug, John Cena yeah. actually gives us some money, but unfortunately, Frenchy. we can't put his name on the credits because you can't see him. Ryan M, J. Jerulo, Arthur, there's no order to this. Is it, and Jelly is that Jerulo, Jason Derulo? It is now. Five dudes.